What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 11 shortest WWE matches of 2023. Now, we have seen some matches that, uh, you know, lasted over 30 minutes this year. Some of them be good, some of them probably went a little bit too long. But we also have seen uh, pretty much glorified squash matches that didn't last at all. There was no time to it. It was a, a one move hit, a finishing move hit, and one, two, three it was over probably the ring entrances were longer than the actual match itself it's probably going to be on this list a few of them going to be on this list so we're going to check this out by wrestlemania man it happens every year there's some long matches and then there's some short matches some of the short matches should probably have been a little bit longer some of the longer matches definitely should have been cut down so we're going to check these out appreciate all love support let's get right into it's been a year of drastic change for wwe and it's also seen some epic matches take place in the squared circle Matches such as Gunther vs. Drew McIntyre vs. Sheamus at WrestleMania 39 Great. and the Bloodline Civil War at Money in the Bank were all given Great. appropriate time to make a statement and leave a lasting impression on the fans. However, 2023 has truly been the year of short matches, with there being a considerable number of matches lasting under a minute in length. These brief matches were either designed to highlight one specific wrestler, or they were drastically and somewhat negatively hindered by time constraints. Uh -huh. The matches on this list relate to showdowns that have taken place on the main roster, so matches that took place on NXT programming aren't applicable. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 11 mm. of the shortest WWE matches of 2023. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive subscribe to WrestleMania Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Number 11, Rhea Ripley versus Natalia, uh, Night of Champions, yeah. 70 seconds. Yep, I knew this One was of the criticisms be on the list. that have been directed towards Rhea Ripley's women's title reign is the lack of quality PLE matches. Ripley is presented as a cold star in the women's division, yet throughout 2023, there's been nobody there to compete for a spot. And this means that most of her matches, particularly those on PLEs, have been incredibly predictable. When yeah. Ripley defended against Natalia at Night of Champions event in May, it was a given that Ripley would retain. Yet nobody could have anticipated Ripley to get the win in just 70 seconds. Yeah. Ripley annihilated Natalia in the match, and there seemed like no reason why WWE couldn't give Rhea an extended match with one of the more talented women in the division. Number 10. And I'm, apparently it was on Natalia's birthday too. So happy birthday. You're getting beaten 70 seconds. Get the fuck up out of here. That's basically how it came off. JD McDonough versus Dolph Ziggler. Raw May 29, Damn. 60 seconds. The two matches on WWE programming in 2023 lasted just one minute in length. The first of these was a match between JD McDonough and Dolph Ziggler. The match in May would have ended up in a double counter after McDonough viciously assaulted oh, Ziggler this. on the outside. The match is notable for being Ziggler's last WWE TV match before his release. The second match of the year coming when in. You really think about it, that kind of sucks. That's his last WWE television match. So far, if I don't know if he'll ever come back, but that's kind of wild for that to be his last match. That was I'm not gonna lie to you. That's definitely wild. Yeah, just one minute in length saw Rick Boogs defeat The Miz in February on Raw. This was the portion of the year where The Miz wasn't on an extended losing streak and the former WWE champion was involved in several short matches to yeah. further his character arc. Number 9, LA Knight vs. Brent Jones, a SmackDown January 20th, 58 seconds. LA Knight has had a breakout year in 2023. He's I gone remember from being one. a manager to main eventing a PLE against Roman Reigns. LA Knight has emerged as one of the top stars in the company, and it was in January when WWE began to take LA Knight seriously as a top star. LA Knight would enter into a feud with Bray Wyatt, Recipes and the build Bray, to this man. match saw LA pick up a number of wins on TV, including a victory that just took 58 seconds. LA defeated Jobber Brent Jones in the aforementioned time, and it was great to see WWE bring oh, back the this. classic concept of the squash match and attempt to get the talent over. Number 8, Piper Niven vs. Nikki Cross, Raw March 6, 55 seconds. Uh, thankfully, 2023 was the year in which Triple H decided to drop the dreadful Dewdrop name and persona. Thank goodness. Dewdrop will revert to the Piper Niven name, and Niven has had a decent run in 2023, and a tag team partnership with Chelsea Green has received positive reviews from fans. Niven's push up the card started to take shape in March as she would be booked to completely squash the once credible Nikki Cross on Raw. Once it would credible. take Niven just 55 seconds to win the match, and the quick match was a great showcase for Niven's powerhouse style that fans have become accustomed to in NXT UK. Yeah. As for Cross, she had a bizarre 2023. 
Cross had mainly been used to put over the other women in the division. Yeah. And the latest gimmick of her being in a trance <laughs> isn't exactly lighting the world on fire. Yeah, she's recently just been sitting in the back. And I, I want to say it's like during Becky Lynch's segment, she'll just be sitting in the back. Like, it's funny, actual, because you have to really notice it, like, to really peep it. But I'm like, the fuck they doing with her, bro? Was she, was she just being creepy, man? Number seven, Dolph Ziggler versus Omos, Raw March oh, 6, man. 50 seconds. On this list Omos twice. has been given some huge matches in 2023. He's wrestled the likes of Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins on premium live events, and surprisingly, these matches were well received by fans. Yeah, Omos shines bad. when he's working with someone that has a talent to carry him, and Lesnar and Rollins fit the bill for this role perfectly. Omos has taken part in numerous squash matches on WWE uh -huh. TV throughout 2023, and in March on Raw, he squashed Dolph Ziggler in just 50 seconds. Jesus, Although it was understandable bro. why WWE booked the match in this way, it received vast criticism as some fans believe that WWE were continuing to misuse Ziggler. Yep. Number 6, Omos man. versus Anthony Alanis, okay. Raw May 1st, 49 seconds. Speaking of Omos, another one of his squash matches took place on May 1st, and it lasted just 49 seconds. Almost would squash a local competitor yep. known as Anthony Alanis, and the idea behind the squash was to get almost ready for his backlash yeah. match with Seth Rollins. As WWE enters into 2024, it'd be great to see Almost deliver longer matches on TV, as Almost has been on WWE programming for quite a while now. And this yeah, I don't know what they do with him. He's to me, he's just he's not that fluid in the ring. I, he's the big guy to be the big guy in in a wrestling ring, but it, he's he's. His move set don't really care for. His mannerisms don't really care for. I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I don't know what you do with him. Me personally, I, I don't know what you do with him. Not saying he doesn't belong there, but I am saying you know I don't know how to create interest for him, for people to want to see Omos. We haven't seen him in a while, but I don't know how you create any interest for someone that big. Other than they're just big and tall, you know? So. Squash match formula has grown tiresome when it comes to presentation of the former tag team champion. Number five, Bobby Lashley versus Mustafa Ali. I Raw think April I remember 3rd, this one. Uh... The almighty Bobby Lashley has been open and honest regarding how much missing WrestleMania 39 impacted him. Lashley was initially booked to face Bray Wyatt. However, due to Wyatt being ill, Wyatt yeah. was pulled from the match. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough time to reposition Lashley, meaning that he was absent from the card entirely. Uh -huh. The night after WrestleMania on Raw, WWE attempted to reposition Lashley as a threat, and the way they did this was by having Lashley yep. destroy Mustafa Ali in a squash Destroyed match. Him. Lashley would make Ali submit to the Hurt Lock in just 40 seconds. This was infamously the Raw that had Vince McMahon made drastic creative alterations to, and it was hardly a surprise that he wanted Lashley to look as strong as possible on the show. Number four, Shayna Baszler versus Nikki Cross, Raw July 17th, 19 seconds. Damn! The summer of 2023 saw WWE attempt to push Shayna Baszler up the card. Baszler would feud with Ronda Rousey in a feud which just so happened to be Rousey's final WWE feud before leaving the company. WWE attempted to make fans invested in the feud, yet there was just a lack of investment from the fans. Yeah, because they, they fucking rushed it, because I don't know what had happened, but like one minute she was tagging with her, then the next minute she turned on her, and then... They just kind of rushed it. So it was like, if they maybe would have built up to it, possibly. I think people were interested. It's just people ultimately did not care because it, it just it happened so quickly. Like the idea of it, people have wanted. It it's just it happened so quickly. Plus, Ronda's character was damn near unbearable. No one wanted her around. <laughs> Actual. So I don't know, man. It, it, it had the makings of being something great. But I did not know she fucking squashed Nikki Cross like that. Did not know. The that. fans had grown tired of Rousey during a second run. Even and it had been a number of years since Baszler that. was a compelling character. To try and present Baszler as credible heading into a SummerSlam showdown with Rousey, they would have Baszler to defeat Nikki Cross on Raw in just 19 seconds. Did this do anything in terms of the excitement levels for the SummerSlam encounter? No. Well, arguably not. <laughs> and the utter silence from the live crowd when Baszler defeated Cross was a clear indicator that what WWE were doing simply wasn't working. Number three, Cameron Grimes versus Baron Corbin at SmackDown. I 12, remember this one. <laughs> seconds. One of the more underrated stars of 2023 has been Cameron Grimes. Grimes has only been given a few chances to shine on WWE TV. Yeah. Yet when he's been given the spotlight, he's been able to deliver and he's managed to connect with the audience. 
one of Grimes' highlights in 2023, uh -huh. saw him defeat Baron Corbin on SmackDown in seven seconds. <laughs> WWE <laughs> likes to claim and market the match as lasting just three seconds, which simply wasn't the case. WWE's questionable timings aside, the match was a big moment for Grimes and he received a huge pop upon securing yeah, the victory. <laughs> As for Corbin, WWE had gone back to basics with his character yeah. in 2023 and his run in NXT has been excellent. Corbin remains one of the most consistently good in-ring talents WWE have. Yeah, he hasn't. he's having a much better run in NXT, which is crazy when you think about it. I don't know if they'll ever at some point bring him back to the main roster. Maybe he can carry that momentum over. But yeah, the main roster, he was just a JAG at some point. And <laughs> the man lost in seven seconds. That lets you know. <laughs> and it's easy to work out why WWE has so much faith in the talented star. Number two, Bianca Belair versus EO Sky at SummerSlam, eight seconds. Matches that feature a Money in the Bank cash in are typically short, and yeah. EO Sky's cash in at SummerSlam was no exception. Yeah. Bianca Belair just won the women's title uh -huh. in a chaotic triple threat match, and this was the perfect opportunity uh -huh. for Sky to cash in and capture a singles title on the main roster. Yep. Sky winning the big one was well deserved, and she was exactly what the women's division on SmackDown needed at the time. Uh -huh. It took Sky just eight seconds to defeat Belair and capture the gold, and this is actually on the shorter side when it comes to Money in the Bank cash ins, as they're usually around 30 seconds on average. And number one, Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus on Raw July 31st, five seconds. Jeez, one of the most bro. disappointing storylines of 2023 was the feud between Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch. On paper, the feud should have been incredibly yeah. special, yet due to the questionable booking decisions and uh -huh. awkward initial chemistry between the two, the feud just failed to take off. When the two legends were booked to face off on the July 31st edition of Raw, Stratus would enter the ring, the bell would sound, and then after five seconds, Zoe Stark would interfere in yep. the match in a DQ. Yep. There were audible groans around the world with yep. this finish, and it was yet another sign that the WWE's booking of the feud wasn't meeting the expectations of fans. This would ultimately end up being the shortest match of 2023, wild, which is crazy bro. when you consider the star power of the women involved. <laughs> Thankfully, Stratus and Lynch would slowly but surely manage to put it together, and their match at Payback, which took place uh -huh. inside a steel cage, received widespread critical acclaim. The match For is sure. considered to be a match of the year contender by many, no, and some would even really... label it as one of the greatest women's matches in WWE history. No, it was a really they good have match. It, folks. 11 of the it was a really good match. I'm not even going to hold you. Yeah, <laughs> the few. I just didn't care, bro. I, the, her, Trish as a heel just did not work. I'm sorry, y'all. I know some of y'all may have liked it. It just didn't work. I, I feel like at a certain point in your career, you can pull that off. But the fans just like you too much. It's kind of hard to pull that off, believably. You know, and Trish is one of those individuals. Like, the fans wanted to like her. Like, her heel promos just didn't work. Like, a lot of times the crowd is just silent. They would have to pipe in booze. Like, I'm like, bro... No one's saying anything. Because no one's buying what you're saying. And it doesn't work. It doesn't. But that match, I, <laughs> I remember that. That five seconds, bro. What was the point if you were going to just do that? I don't <laughs> But at least they had some pretty good PLE matches to make up for the, the lackluster buildup, in my personal opinion. But comment down below. Let me know some other videos you guys want me to check out. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150k. And I'm still getting speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.